Hello to anyone um, who's watching this video. You're watching um, a game that was arranged through the Gauntlet, which is a community on the internet that gets together and plays tabletop role-playing games online, usually of the indie variety, you know, um, stuff you find on itch, you know, PBTA games, story games, OSR games, all sorts of games, but primarily of the indie persuasion. You can find all stuff the Gauntlet does at gauntlet-rpg.com. There'll be a link down below for yourself to check it out. Um, where the Gauntlet does all sorts of things, you know, stuff like blogs and forums. There's the zine that the Gauntlet puts out um, named Codex, which usually contains, you know, supplements to existing games. Um, more often than not, games that, you know, that spun off of Codex, stuff like uh, you might have heard, like Trophy Dark slash Gold um, or Brindlewood Bay. Um, and, you know, and other existing games in itself. I think the latest Codex issue just came out about uh yeah a week a week or so ago um so if you look at the gauntlet's patreon you'll definitely um check that out there's also the podcasting network the gauntlet does um just a shout out the most recent episode of the gauntlet pod podcast which is the kind of wrap up uh end of the year favorite games of the year 2020 where um not only will you find you know um just some great chat um also some great recommendations for games so if you're like I I I'm I want to you know no more you know expand the ever growing list of games I want to play or try out. Give yourself you know some a good hour and twenty seven minutes, and then suddenly that list will be much longer, and you'll be like, "What is time?" Especially after this year, what is time? It's, um, but the uh, one of the most important part of the gauntlet, which uh, I was going to say, like most important part, is the calendar to which this game and many others is arranged. This is the concluding session of our December run of Apocalypse Keys, uh, which is a powered by the Apocalypse game by uh, Jamil Najadi about um, monsters uh, working for a shadowy uh, division, a shadowy agency trying to hold back the apocalypse while holding back the darkness within, within themselves. Think Hellboy and you're basically there. Um, so uh, like I said, this is like the, the last one of this run. Um, um, we uh, I will be running more in in the new year. So we'll, this might not be the last we see of these characters. Here's hoping. Um, but who are these characters? Who are these people you're watching? Um, I should have introduced myself. Uh, that's my cue. Hi, my name's Leandro. I use he, him pronouns. And yeah, that, I'm running this game. That's what I'm doing here. Um, let's go right to left this time on the character keeper. Um, so it is spare. <laughs> first, I've just been going first this whole time. So Dono, why don't you introduce yourself and your character? Shocking departure from tradition, Leandro. Uh, <laughs> Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Donna, my pronouns are he, him, and tonight I'm playing Una, pronouns they, them, and they are the Fallen, uh, an angel who was uh, destroyed by their jealous god, um, uh, you know, and trying to get used to this whole um, normal, everyday, have relationships with people who will be around um, for, for the rest of your existence. Uh, I think um, last week, uh, or the last session rather, we saw them quite forlorn at the end of things as they saw the fading light of heaven, uh, closing off the dastardly schemes of, of Alexander What's-His-Face, uh, trying to storm heaven himself. So yeah, uh, a little bit uh, lonely uh, with this lost opportunity uh, is Uno right now? God, um, you know you've been defeated when one of um, yeah, one of the people when they can't even bother to remember their last name. Also, we've just been through the holidays. Uh, it's, we did skip a week because time. Uh, next, you keep uh, blaming time for things. I look time. Our time's fault. It's you know time. What yeah, does it so. do? It takes a cigarette and puts it in your mouth. That's I don't know why that song came to my head. But Brandon, why don't you introduce yourself and your character? Speaking of time, um, yes, my name is Brandon, uh, and my character is Hope, um, a um, a young woman uh, who is uh, playing uh, the using the last uh, playbook 
Um, Hope is the, uh, the is a time traveling replicant and the the only survivor on her side of the war of extermination that will happen uh, sometime in the future. Um, who has come back to try to prevent that from happening or prevent the war from happening or it's not clear. Hope has been through the timeline so many times that things have become horribly tangled uh, for her personally as well as uh, for her ostensible mission. The only thing she knows for sure um, is that she needs uh, the other uh, people in the group and depends on them. And she was uh, she was very um, very much uh, on a, a despondent uh, frame of mind and consumed with her own um, with her own troubles and with the memories of the loss um, that uh, was evergreen in her heart and all the people of her kind who had died uh, when she was suddenly reminded of that um, people needed her help right here, right now. Um, and uh, she was uh, re redeemed, as it were, um, through the use of a bolt of love, um, a literal, in this case, uh, cast uh, by, a, by an emotional weapon in which she, uh, she realized uh, anew um, how much the other people here mattered to her and that she could depend upon that even if everything else um, was in flux. Tabs. Um, uh, gosh, hope, hope has been through a lot, um, but she's been a trooper through it all. Um, last but not least, uh, last for once, Mario, why don't you introduce yourself and your character? Hey, my name is Mario, and I'm playing Cameron Thweetooth, um, a quite huge uh, crocodile humanoid uh, creature from a planet called Sumpf Neun. Um, and he has been living on Earth since um, 1553. So quite some years. It's not that much on, on the planet um, he's origin from, um, uh, originally from. Um, and for some reason, he never made human friends yet. But now he met Mary Fitzroy. And he hopes they will become friends um, further down the line. Um, he forgot to got, get her number, um, but that's something that the vision should be able to arrange. Um, so um, he's really hopeful on that. Um, then he became quite a close friend um, with uh, Shard. Um, Shard has been so supportive, so friendly, so helpful. Um, but Cameron doesn't know what what type of friendship that's supposed to be because sometimes it feels like um, Shard is some sort of like parental figure, figure um, and sometimes it's just just a real real good friend. Um, so um, it's it's so complicated to to name this kind of friendship, um, and that's. And that's also because Shard is all ever changing uh, faces and appearances, uh, and 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 it's really hard to keep keep track of that. And sometimes you just don't know who's standing in front of you, and then you realize, oh, it's one of your best friends. Complicated. Um, then there is hope, um, and I, yeah, and um, Cameron just realized that he totally underestimated. Um, and the unestimated hope. Um, she, she, she outlived um, even Cameron um, by by centuries, um, and that's something he he doesn't encounter often. Like most people die within like say eighty years, maybe a hundred, but like hope is is as old as time, and that's 
scary, that's that's sad, but it's also really hopeful. Um, because, well, she she's still alive. So there, as long as as hope is alive, there is hope. Um, so that that's something that's something cool. That's something um, that that gives Cameron hope because he actually should back on his own planet, be the god um, of that planet, uh, and maybe stop his quite violent sister. But you know, um, now he saves humans for a living, um, and that occupies most of his time. It's difficult, and uh, on top of all of that, um, he's he's a secret admirer of Una, because they they are the most the most beautiful, the most perfect creature that ever walked uh, this earth. Um, yeah, Una is perfect. Like. Nobody, nobody can say otherwise. That that's just a fact. It's it's Una, um, oh, and then not to forget, um, Cameron is still missing this crazy plant alien friend of his, um, Anter. That uh, uh, they, they they just disappeared. Um, like by now, I think it's months ago, and no sign of them. No, nothing. Um, they just vanished from Earth, like they never existed, and um, yeah, that's something that is all over Cameron's diaries uh, because he just started writing diaries. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it seems like uh, everyone's prepped for feelings. Um, before we dive in, though, I do want to talk about the safety tools that we're using. Uh, for the session. Um, we've done it off, off camera, but we did look through our lines and veils. For those who don't know, lines are things that won't be crossed, just won't show up in fiction. Veils are things that can happen in fiction, but we're not going to concentrate on it. Like, you know, it happens off screen or it gets like you know, a sentence or two. We're also using script change um, for this session. Um, for those who don't know, script change is like a series of commands that kind of lets us help modulate um, control the fiction um, with a more deft hand, so to speak. Um, and there are like three commands I want to highlight off of a uh, script change. Um, if, you've, if you've ever looked at a uh, television remote, you'll know what these commands are. I should stop fiddling with this. Um, uh, the first one is rewind. When you call for a rewind, you back up to a specific point in a scene and do the scene over again, avoiding whatever issue led to a rewind and trying a different way. So, and it could be any issue. It could be um, your, um, it could be like a name or just the tone of the scene or the general scene itself. Um, I might ask questions what the issue is, is, but you don't have to explain yourself. And uh, when the rewind is called, uh, that will be respected. We'll do, we'll, call, we'll rewind and try something else. There's fast forward, which is when you call for, that's when you want to fade to black and advance time is needed to avoid content or elements of play or just to move forward in time. You know, like maybe there's something about to happen. Like, uh, we don't need to linger on this moment. You can just fast forward. It's kind of part of what we talk about fails uh, when like, when you flag a fast forward, basically like, uh, we don't need to like concentrate on this either because uh, we don't need to, or, you know, it's not important. Um, Last is pause, which you can call for if you need a break from for a variety of reasons, whether the scene is becoming intense um, or if you are seeking clarity or discussion about the game or the content. Um, um, it's kind of part of the open door policy that uh, we use here in the gauntlet where basically if for any reason you need to step away from the table, um, you can call for a pause and say like, you know, you need to go. And it could be any reason again, it could be that uh, there is an emergency you need to take care of or you were more tired than you thought and you need to take like a bio break or you know, just need to like, yeah, exactly, go. Or you need to like step away from the table entirely. That's perfectly fine and call for a pause. We'll talk about it and make sure folks are comfortable. Okay. So last session, y'all did it. You um, destroyed the time anchor underneath Wizard World. Um, which is, uh, if I ever write this up as a mystery, is getting a new name. Um, what, was the, what was it that decided? Um, 
in the Enchanted Empire. There we go. That's 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 lovely in British. Um, um, but for now, it is Wizard World. You've defeated uh, the wizard himself. You've brought him to his knees. You've destroyed the time anchor, and you've caught the uh, perfidious shapeshifter that had that have been pretending to be the a division agent. It's all, it's all kind of wrapped up there. So unless there's anything else you want to do in the theme park, what I'm going to open is like what the mood is as like the division in force has kind of like come in to like basically clean up. And while they're doing that, they bundled you all into cars to take you back to HQ. But if there's anything else you want to do in the park, um, open for that i think we should leave all <laughs> before we cause any more disruption personally i mean the only thing i would have to add here is that um when we leave uh, when we just walk out of the uh, through the gates of the park um we see cameron bearing like bags of those crazy space shuttle chocolate kind of thingies <laughs> He got earlier he hasn't eaten all of them yet so still some left okay that's that's a good detail um i'll add a, a, an extra detail um one uh, two extra details one um the agent you rescued um miss uh ophelia murphy or operative Ophelia murphy is coming along with you she's banged up um so but she needs to debrief um other folks or division folks are kind of taking over the park um um you can kind of see that like um i think you see like several like agents marching up towards like the elevator leading to the wizard's tower um they're kind of like and and they're like forced to be like all right no we shouldn't have let one person just be in charge or bring everyone in in force a bit and then the second detail is that um, other division agents have bundled Shard away to a separate car. And waiting by the car, again, surrounded by more agents in handcuffs, is that is that lady friend of theirs, um, Cassandra, who has apparently stuck around. She's in cups. And the two of them are bundled in a separate car while the three of you and Operative Murphy are on another car as you head back to Division HQ in Dover. Can I get like a sense of what the mood is uh, from each character? We'll go in the order that we did introduction, so that's okay, folks. Um, Yuna, how are you feeling? I think, um, yeah, Una is feeling all right. I mean, I don't think it has really hit them yet. So um, this sense of being forlorn hasn't quite had the its fullest impact. Um, so you'll see them, you know, get into the car without much of a backward glance and maybe lower the window and lean their head against it and just um, you know, every so often you'll see their eyes like flick, flicker up to the sky, like looking for, as if they're looking for some kind of sunbeam or glimpse of beyond, which obviously doesn't happen in uh, sunny England all too often. But uh, <laughs> here's hope. <laughs> Speaking of hope, you want I should open a portal through the clouds. Um, the uh, um. Hope is um, uh, Hope has Humphrey in her arms, um, and is um, is is uh, scratching his back uh, and holding him, cradling him against her her chest uh, as as uh, as best she can while they're getting into cars and things like that. Uh, he is seems oblivious too. Uh, Humphrey seems oblivious to to anything else. Um, Hope is tired, but um, seems reasonably at peace for once, uh, which just means that she's 
you know, the, um, she has managed to put out of her mind um, the, uh, the, the guilt and the, and the, the, the shame that she carries with her um, all the time. Um, before they uh, get in the car, uh, she has a sudden uh, realization and yanks the tiara off of her head and stuffs it into her bag. They circle it. Um, that, uh, that she crafted out of dreams. We'll come to that realization in a moment since you have a starting session move, but yes. um, Cameron, you've got your <laughs> space shuttle cookies with you, but how are you feeling? It's been, it's been super exhausting. Um, we've been running around that park like crazy. Um, well, at, at least I have been because I can't fly. Um, and if that is somehow possible, I need to grow some, uh, I need to grow a pair of wings because that seems to be the, a, a, a smarter and a cooler way to move around. Um, I, I'm, I'm quite impressed how the others did that. Um, that, that, was, that was just cool. And that's maybe because, um, well, Una's wings are the most beautiful I've ever seen. Um, and, and I get, get ever so sparkly eyes whenever um, she's flying around like the little angel they they are um that is uh that it's it's just beautiful to watch uh but apart from that i know everybody's a bit down right now and it's not it's not been our best job so the thing i do is um uh, once i stuff my my big crocodile mouth uh with with a lot of chocolate um i realize oh damn there are other people with me so um I go like, well, mm, do, you, you guys want some chocolate too? Uh, I, I seen a YouTube video um, where that, that guy was telling that it, it really helps if, you, if you're down or if you're sad, like you should eat chocolate and everything's better. And, and, and I can tell it helps. Oh, hell yeah, I'll have some chocolate. Uh, says uh, Ophelia, um, and she will like just without even waiting for you to say anything, she will just take one, take no, take one, and then another. Thinks about it, takes another, um, and and I think she'll eat two at once, and then kind of like sink back and be like, oh, okay, that's 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 good, that's the stuff. See. And I like um, put a bag um, up in Hope's face. Um, uh, Hope will fish one out and, and say thank you. Um, and then could kind of absently pop it in her mouth um, and find not know where to do with the wrapper and finally stuff it in her bag along with all the rest of her crap. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I smile. Sorry, go ahead. No, I, I smile on that, and I, I wanted to add that. Um, uh, right now, I, I just think after seeing uh, Una with their wings, uh, I might be too shy to to address uh, Una directly. So I just hold the bag and wait. Um, yeah, I think uh, Una takes one and kind of regards us curiously. Uh, and, uh, you know, pops us in their mouth. Um, and, I mean, it's not like it's an experiment. I'm sure they have tasted chocolate before, but, you know, it's kind of a, let's see if this one does anything, even though I know I don't have any brain chemistry. So it's not like it's going to give me any kind of hit, like it might, you know. It'll they, taste uh, good. Says hope. I believe not, uh, not everything it has like to. More. Not everything has to be amphetamine. <laughs> um, I think Ophelia might disagree. 
Mm-hmm. All right. She says as she is like, I'm stuck sure you can one. get. I'm sure you can get meth if the you know, in the division if you really want it. Hmm. I think like you see like Ophelia's like already like he's eating really quickly and already licking off like the melted chocolate. It just kind of gives you a look as if like I don't care if you judge me. Hope says I like British chocolate. It's got a kind of caramel taste to it. I was gonna suggest like a couple of moves are kind of like firing off. First off, uh, Hope, let's do your start of session one. Yeah, flickering hope. Mm. Um, hope, um, hope starts to sing quietly. Um, a song that relates to love and to death. Um, and she, she alternates back and forth between two melodic lines that, and clearly it's meant to be sung in harmony, but she can't do that. So she's flicking back and forth and it gives you the impression uh, that she's singing with herself. Um, and, um, this is a little by that, um, that, um, one of the clone sisters in the crash would sing to us. Um, and it reminded us that we were going to die sometime and that that was okay. And that in the meantime, uh, we were loved. Um, and that love could make time hold still. And what I wish is that time would just hold still sometimes. Not for real, but I mean that nothing would happen for a little while. And we could just be. That's that's what I hope for. And I think Cameron totally misinterprets um, the mood. Uh, in which hope saying that and Cameron goes like, oh man, yeah, I, I wish I would, would have a different body, especially stranded on this planet. Um, I, I, I wish I would more look like, and then he's eyeing Una and then realizes that's like nothing he actually wants to say. <laughs> and then looks back to hope and says, more like your body, that seems seems perfectly appropriate for for a planet like this um pe people seem to, to like you um I, I i wish they wouldn't be scared by just seeing me oh well i just just that's uh, i'm just the fact that i can pass doesn't mean i'm any more like them than you are you know um still it's a different kind of struggle i guess you see yeah I, but in I a way struggle with look look different and feel different. Yeah, but in a way, they don't expect you to act um, normal because they can tell that you're different, that you're special. And yeah, some of them may, you know, think of you, see, you see a monster, but at least, you know, at least they are prepared for you to, to be, who you are, uh, whereas then they look at me, they expect me that I'm just like them. They ex and when I'm not, when it turns out that I'm, I'm not like them, then it's a betrayal. Does that make sense? Uh, a bit. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, and you know, you have, I have to I'm pretend, not... I have to pretend 
I have to pretend to be human all the time. All the time. Because if I don't, if I don't, then I'm I'm just wrong. That's why that's why they killed us. (laughs) You know, ironically, if they had made us to look less like them, we might never have had that war. They might. But I think in the end, one of the reasons that they destroyed us was that they couldn't stand the fact that we looked so much like them, but we were nothing like them. Okay, now I'm confused again. Um, but but I just assume it feels like you're supposed to be the god of of a world, and you don't want to be, and mm-hmm. and everybody expects you to have all the answers and to know like which planet to raid next or which tribe war to call uh, to call out and and all that stuff, um, and and you just don't, and then all of a mm-hmm. sudden somebody open a portal and you get sucked in and then you end up on a, on a planet where nobody's likely you and the only creatures that look like you can't speak. Um, I just assume you feel like lost because that, that, that's what, what I feel. Oh yeah. No, no, I, I believe it. Um, I don't feel lost in that way. This is, um, you know, this world here is very much like the world that I'm from. Um, and, but I'm surrounded by enemies all the time. They don't know it. I'm the only one who knows. But these people will eventually hate me and all of my people. They and um, if they really knew, if they knew who I really was, they'd uh, they'd destroy me now. Maybe, but they don't because I pretend, and I'm good at it, and I'm useful. As long as I'm useful and I pretend that I'm different, then. I'm safe, which is not very safe. But, but I think, I think we can make this place like very safe for you because <laughs> where I come from, um, people just obey their God. They, they, they just do. And, and sure. Una, you're a God of this world, right? Could, could you just like, tell all those people to leave hope alone oh wow uh, as soon as you directed your attention to Una, like uh, i was like no nope bye uh, <laughs> yeah. oh no in time i'm going to roll my move so yeah um oh my gosh so right, uh, i'm going done. to spend two oh, <laughs> time is internet okay. works fine yeah Dice out and then re roll. Oh, too many dice. Take two of them. And that is a 10. Oh, uh, yeah, that's on the. That's on the. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's on the on the, on the good bit. Um, yes. Oh. Just, so I choose two. And. Um, I think um,
I think this, this, this conversation that I'm having is very dangerous. Um, no, but you don't have anything to have a keys to the apocalypse with. So I am going to get six darkness tokens, which of course puts me way over. Ah, uh, gosh. Okay. Because I mean, if I, am, you, I mean, if you I am, choose to am, gain a key, that just means I'll cash in a, a one for the next mystery. If we get to it. I'll give you a premonition of what's to come. But you don't have to. You can take your darkness tokens if you want. Um, I think at this point that's much more appropriate. I'm playing with fire right now, talking about talking about things uh, that I shouldn't be talking about. Uh, but my guard is down. Um, yeah. So let's get out that move. Yeah, gosh. Which is called I forget. Corrupt your soul. Corrupt your soul. Is that what it's called? Mm-hmm. It's in the situational moves tab. Oh, situational moves. There it is. All okay. right. So um, when this is roll plus three darkness, it means you spend three automatically. I presume. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Bump and spend three, and we got a six. Wow! Oh, no, and, that, no, that's good. That's good. This is the one you want to roll low. Oh, it's hey, look at that. Yes. So, for a moment there, talking about these things, Hope looks terrible. And I don't mean that she looks ill but that you see anyone at the camera on when I, you see um, the potential that hope could have to destroy everything um, in the, in order to protect the people that she cares about, which include you. Um, and the fact that she, that in, in a way she regards humanity as the enemy that has to be guarded against to protect people like you and her sisters who are not, don't exist yet. And that she will do anything to keep you safe. Um, and then she's just hope again. Okay, so um, if it's fine, I would give um, uh, Una a chance to, to react um, mm -hmm. to what I just said before um, I saw um, Hope's other side or true face, not really sure <laughs> um, what that was. Um, and the thing was that um, uh, I proposed that um, just as I know it from my world, um, people are supposed to, to obey their God. And um, then we, I figured out that, that Hope feels maybe threatened um, living among humans because Hope knows they would uh, eventually destroy them uh, destroy her and 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 um like the others like her whole race um and i just i simply just suggested that um as uh, una is a god of this world maybe uh una should just like talk to talk to humans talk <laughs> talk to people and tell them to leave uh hope the fuck alone because like yeah we all sort of need hope because she knows stuff. Yeah, I think uh, during this conversation, um, it's obvious, you know, if you're paying attention to Una, that some of the strands of hopes, um, his, you know, existential dismay, if we can put it to that. Uh, really touch them uh, in kind of an essential way to their nature. Um, 
So I think um, I think they will just kind of. I, I'm not sure if this is adding fuel to the fire or <laughs> or some advice that Hope needs to hear right now, or some life experience that Hope needs to hear right now. But uh, I'll just say that someone can be 100% responsible for the way you are and yet feel threatened by it to betray you in such a fundamental way is what is impossible to forgive. Yes. And there is a, a lack of awareness about humans that, Sorry. That's the reason that I feel like I can fight for them because they're not aware of what they're doing. But some people, some things are. I hope it smiles at Baduna and threads an arm around hers and, uh, and, and rests her shoulder briefly on, on Una's and goes, thank you for understanding. Cameron's munching chocolate. He lost track of what's going on. He doesn't understand a thing right now. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Ophelia is, has been determinedly looking out of the window like, I'm not going to be involved in this. But has also taken more of your chocolate. Okay. Um... Okay, I think um, we've, uh, we've been here for at least an hour. Um, let's take a quick break for this one. Um, and not to say that you want to do more in this car ride, um, but <laughs> let's get you to Division HQ. Let's take, um, let's come back at, let's see. Let's, uh, let's just take a good, I'm sorry, I'm looking at this. No, let's come back 40 past quite a bit of a break um and then yeah we'll see what you what you do in your downtime um talk to you in a bit okay um so let's say that yeah the car ride passes and you're back at um division hq at least the hq here in britain which is a castle um uh, upon the cliffs of dover it's very picturesque um the top half is kind of more of a tourist trap kind of place where the bottom half is like more of the uh, the real division headquarters is like underground and whatnot and a bunch of different buildings around this town um but that's where you're kind of like going um i think um um two things one um when you kind of get there i think you're told that instead of like a big group debrief um Kind of like the officer that's handling the debriefs, um, Operative McLaughlin is gonna the division superior um, is gonna meet with you one by one, um, all of you. Um, and two, uh, I just want to point out this is technically their first encounter with <laughs> Agent Murphy or Operative Murphy because you don't the one you talked to at the start of this it wasn't the real one. So if anyone wants to fire that off. Um, I'm asking you, Una or Cameron, since I haven't gotten to roll a thing yet. Um, isn't isn't McLaughlin uh, the guy with the terrarium with the thousands and yes. frogs? Okay. Yes, yeah, that that one. Um, if not, you're gonna let, let Ophelia go. She'll take some of the chocolate again. Um, might see her around. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I will. Um, <laughs> I will trigger my specific first encounter move here with with Agent Murphy. We'll we'll, we'll leave her a piece <laughs> just this once. <laughs> yeah, she's had a rough time. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is like intersperse in between <laughs> each of you talking to upper uh the division superior i'll give you each a um a scene that you might want to set um in 
in Division HQ, like whether it's with someone's picker or your, your character is doing something, um, and also get a chance to like see what your characters kind of like do in downtime. Um, but I, I think mean, I need to oh, report, good. right? I, yes. I got the spe special mission. Um, yes, so I think you're going to go first. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, talk to uh, the director the division superior so why don't we do that first and then we'll let uh you know and hope think about what they're doing while cameron has kind of been summoned to uh mclaughlin's office um just as a reminder because i'm looking at the notes from the previous session operative mclaughlin is uh a one of the big wigs in the division they are committed um to the agency they have a cable uh, connected to the back of their head that's connected to a machine. In their office is a terrarium full of frogs. They speak in a low voice, quite understated, and they're played by Pete Postlewaite. Um, uh, young Pete Postlewaite. Um, they're in the NPCs tab. So yeah, I think um, Cameron, when you're kind of like summoned in, Alfred McLaughlin is kind of like staring towards the where the terrarium is and when you enter they just say Cameron sweet tooth the operative sweet tooth sit down thank you how was wizard world um quite surprising um i had my suspicions um, as I reported in an earlier text message, um, I, I do not know if Ophelia Murth Murthy, um, really works, uh, for our courses anymore. Um, I have a reason to distrust, um, her, um, and I feel that her part in imprisoning Alexander Python's, um, has been quite a selfish uh, one. So I think cool. uh, we should be really cautious um, about uh, the next steps with her. Um, but that isn't why you called me in, right? No, Ophelia Murphy and the matter of what she has done um, counterpointed with what this woman and they kind of like they f they casually gesture to the desk and you see there's like a lot of pictures and files strewn on the desk there's pictures of Ophelia of Alexander Payton and of Wizard World and um, the woman uh, Cassandra but that is a separate matter and I thank you for your suspicions no? I'm here about the assignment I've entrusted to you. Yes. And I um, there is a bit of a disclaimer um, uh, I have to talk about because um, we all know hope can be quite charming. Um, and I can't help but uh, feel that we have become friends. So everything I'm saying um, from here on might, yeah, might not be really as professional as I want it to be. Uh, and I think um, I, I don't trust myself in this matter. Um, um, Are you saying you're compromised, operative, sweet tooth? Ah. Uh, maybe partially because I think my observations will be still the same, just tonally different. Mm -hmm. um, because I feel we need to spend more resources on Hope's well-being, as she might be um, our biggest asset and our greatest fear all in once. Operative oh, Sweet Tooth, I'm sure you're quite aware that the division, the kinds of people it employs and it enlists, 
on a good day, on a bad day, each of them could be described as our greatest threat and our greatest asset. Are you telling me that it is Operative Hope's turn to take that mantle? No, I think we then we should uh, specify um, about um, the importance um, of the metal or maybe of how big um, this, uh, the issue with hope uh, could get because we're not talking like Cameron Sweet who might go mad and might go uh, might become a world eater and chop off uh, bits and pieces of uh, certain planets. Um, we're talking about the collapse, maybe even the extinctions of multiverses just by just by uh, the two hands of hope. Um, she is she's capable of manipulating um, everything the others could could do like she could she could eat worlds if she wanted to. She's capable of everything I possibly could of everything. Maybe I'm not really sure about Una because gods are way more complicated. But she, like, Hope could do everything uh, Anther could have done. Um, and I'm certain that um, Hope's powers might even exceed yours. I think, like, um, there's, like, an awkward pause as, like, McLaughlin's, like, literally processing um, what you're saying being fed to some kind of machine somewhere. Hmm. What you're saying, it sounds like operative hope then is less, less a gun and more a time bomb. Is that a a fair assessment? That could simultaneously exist in different places then yes, we would come close to it. Tell me, Operative Sweet Tooth, is this how you feel when you're in her presence? Uh, no, this is what I'm... I fear this will become my nightmares from now on um, because um, I've listened to her and I did not understand everything she was saying but there is there is a certain type of wipes that you could get and i i think i've seen enough to just categorize those sort of wipes um and i feel at the end of not just this world at the end of every single world uh there is we will see a tiny small person that lost everything and on on whose mercy every living creature there ever was and ever will be uh, is like if if hope becomes our enemy like we're doomed there's no yeah we just could stop doing what we're doing because there's literally no hope for any of us. Um, I mean, this is bad, bad. You get me? Like, like real bad. Um, I think because part of, because McLaughlin is face is inexpressive to the max. I think as you're saying this, I think I'm gonna ask you to listen to the dark. This is, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is quite some emotion that Cameron's putting out. Like, this, <laughs> if hope goes bad, game over, man. Game over. <laughs> game over. <laughs> well, that, that's a, yeah, that's the sort of vibes I got, I got from hope for quite some sessions now. Um, 
Cool. So um, yeah, um, I, I took earlier I took two um, points of darkness because I felt unloved um, mm -hmm. um, a couple of times. So I think yeah, why not go full in? I, I roll with a plus four, I guess. I think you can go up to three. It oh yeah, only up to three. So I go with three then. Yeah, um, that, because that seems appropriate and. There we go. Oh, I rolled an 11, so I'm at a 14. <laughs> wow. Okay. So you must either mark a condition, mark doom, or lose all your darkness tokens. Unless you're kind of quite impassioned about this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, um, I, I already tried to be quite awkward in a conversation. So I take another doom, which brings me to a five. Um, and I think the consequence is I don't feel um, I, I'm, I'm taken serious right here because I try to explain that everything else doesn't matter if we lose our connection with hope. Um, and, and we're just trying to, to do some, some professional nonsense talk and, and, and try to, to avoid the actual core of the topic to like speak straight um uh yeah i i that that just makes me angry and sometimes i get angry and uh, yeah <laughs> it's just not what <laughs> what camera likes to do um so just let me look up this move it's uh, what condition uh, are you going to take yeah when you take when you mark all doom you also mark a condition <laughs> Yeah, so you get that uh, anyway. <laughs> okay, yeah, perfect. Uh, this, yeah, it's, it's quite a climactic <laughs> experience here. Um, um, so the I, hear, I hear a table breaking in the near future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, hmm, it's different. I could be either driven or hopeless. I want to say I go with um, <laughs> driven because then I've got a minus two. On listen to the dark, which uh, yeah, yeah seems seems appropriate, uh, and I'm down to one darkness, and then again back, yeah I'm um, I'm going to simplify the character keeper, uh, at some point, um, situation got words. some good notes it's really helpful for me, uh. <laughs> if you have conditions and different names, <laughs> if you have five or more tokens of darkness. No, that's the wrong one. It's the doom. Yeah, doom. Hmm. Mark a condition, erase all doom, and take a doom advancement. OK, perfect. Then I'll just, um, yeah, just we can't, like, does it feel appropriate if we if we cut to somebody else and I take a move? or or? Do you see like? Do we hear a crash from inside the situation <laughs> room? <laughs> oh yeah, right. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, so um, I just I just rewind a little bit and um, why why I say like um, I just want to phrase it differently. Um, I I don't feel like like he's taking me serious, and I'm saying you don't understand me. Like, hope is not all we have. But if we lose her, nothing else matters anymore. And I just punch through the, the glass of the terrarium. And I just get one of those colorful tiny frogs out. And I say... See, they lived in their separate world and they didn't see it coming. I think I just warned you and what's happening to all of us is in your hands. And then I just like run out uh, and take the frog with me. Wow, taking one of his frogs, how dare you? Uh, <laughs> what a beautifully petty thing to do. Um, okay, cool. Glad all that happened. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, um, while this is happening, I don't think Una and Hope are being made to wait outside. Um, I think it's very much a case of the, you've been given a time to come in so you can do whatever. 
So I want to know um, what Una or Hope are doing while they're back at HQ. And we've not really colored much of what HQ looks like beyond maybe some people's personal rooms and that orphanage, um, which is Anther's thing. Um, so yeah, what are you all up to <laughs> while waiting? Um, so, um... I don't know, Brandon, do you have a, an idea for, for Hope doing something alone, or do you think... No, no, I'd, I'd like to do it with Una. With, uh, with Una. Okay, yeah. Um, so I don't know, uh, Leandro, if you've done any research on Dover Castle, I think, like, underneath there's quite a lot of uh, labyrinthine tunnels and everything like that. It used to be, uh, or maybe it still is, a, uh, a kind of coordination center for the OEF. Um, yeah, I think we I think we talked about that last time. This is months ago. I vaguely remember RAF being mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's on my bucket list of things to go visit. You know, uh, mm. but anyway. Uh, so I wonder if there's like a lot of uh, rec rooms where like the the the, the normal quote unquote uh, division members can just hang out while they're waiting for stuff to happen. So. You know, maybe we can like grab a, a terrible cup of coffee in the cafeteria. Yes. Um, I'm sure that we can and find a corner where we're not stared at too much. Yeah, yeah. Or just the right amount that we can ignore, you know. <laughs> um, Humphrey has gotten up on the table where he's not supposed to be in his, in his sleep. Um, so I think Una is maybe if if they're allowed to to stroke Humphrey, they will. Oh yes, please. Well, I, I was more thinking about Humphrey, not uh... Humphrey, Humphrey, <laughs> Humphrey. 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 Humphrey gives mm, to eyes open a slit, yeah, and leans his head into your palm. So I don't know how much you take Cameron's, I don't know, obliviousness to heart. It's part of who he is. Um, yeah. And I think it's a good defensive mechanism, actually. I think I, uh, I, wish, I wish I understood less sometimes I think I would make I would uh, make life a lot easier yeah I suppose I'm glad he is unable to confront his own emotions on these things myself it might make things awkward I'm afraid I said some things I shouldn't have on the car. No, you're you're right. I think. Well, it was all the truth. Um, I'm just not sure it was wise to speak it aloud. I um. Dealing with Alexander must have been very difficult. Well, not everyone who has prayed to me or worshiped me turns out like that. But uh, sometimes ones who get the power ones who tasted what I can do. Can't resist the lure of going beyond. Oh. And it must have been hard to mm, to deal with someone who had an offer of possibly breaching, storming the gates, as it were. 
however quixotic. Yeah. There's nothing so hard sometimes as thinking that you might possibly succeed in getting what you want. Even though you know it's not very likely. I mean, I don't know what you would do if uh, someone gave you your chance to get everyone back. <laughs> What, what price would be too high to pay for that? I'm still answering that question. Because, of course, I get the chance to do that over and over. And um, Uh, I found out that sometimes the price is too high. I, I don't know if I'm lucky or not to have the opportunity to try again after seeing my efforts turn into complete disaster. because they have and once or twice I just wanted to lay down and stop um, but I Something in me keeps me trying again to get it right this time. To find that impossible balance between having my people survive while not destroying everything. And I haven't done it yet. Yeah, I'm not sure what I would do. I failed over and over. Okay. Um, so I think maybe it's better not to know. Maybe. Not to have been shown. But then I I wasn't cast out of of paradise. So I'm trying to I'm not trying to get back to a perfect world. I'm trying to fix something that was horribly broken. Yeah, I don't even know what I really want to do if I ever did get back there. Mm. Hell hath no fury, etc., etc. Or... <laughs> it's funny because of the way that phrase usually ends. <laughs> Because that's me. I am, a, I am, I guess I'm not a woman exactly, but I look like one. All right, who's, who's doing the reaching out? I'm, I just want to know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I am, am I terrible at this right now? Uh, and so no, how many I'm tokens? This is the dark. Okay. Mm. Well, that's true. Um, uh, I don't know. Um, what do you think, Brandon? I I can see it, it either way. Go for it. Okay. Um, I will. 
I'll roll, I'll roll it with two tokens. And, uh, roll a six, so that is an eight. Gosh. Never, it's never, it's always just the right one, isn't it? Um, <laughs> well, I mean, say that... we're usually aiming for a nine, the, the perfect center <laughs> of that result. And you more often than not get it. Um, yeah. All right, so an eight to ten, you both find the light in the dark. How do you gain the hope? Not capitalize hope. <laughs> Um, I mean, I'm inclined to follow the fiction and take an easy pick, which is to unmark that condition of forlorn, because I think um, Una is quite, I mean, between their discussion in the car and here, uh, they are quite happy that at least one person in the universe understands them. What about hope? And I believe I will back off a point of doom. No. Okay. Let uh, giving voice to some memories of failure allows me to uh, let some of them go. Um, I think as you're kind of like waiting, I think there's like a clerk who, who kind of comes up to you, like one of the gophers in um, in a vision, not a literal gopher, because I feel like I have to specify that. Um, who will just say that um, Operative McLaughlin is looking for you and looks at Una. Um, but before we get to that, is there anything else you want to do um, in this scene between the two of you? Um. Hope says, um, look what I, um, look what I found. Um, and she pulls out something that looks like uh, a little multi-pointed star, a three-dimensional star with like uh, with eight points I think um, and she holds it up in the air and she gives a little twirl in it and it, it floats and gently gently turns around like a little spinning ornament Isn't it pretty? I mean, I, I presume I'm missing the point entirely by wondering what it's for. <laughs> but I presume that means it's for looking pretty. Mm. You're, you're angelic. <laughs> um, uh, no. Uh, no, it's a weapon. Um, it's a very beautiful weapon. Um, does it uh, eviscerate individuals or does it destroy stars? Because I have no idea how to judge these things without, you know, kicking the tires. And I don't think we want to do that here. No. Um, well, in my dream, 
Um, it, um, it tore apart reality in limited area. Made a, made a little dimensional quake. It's hard to activate those, so don't worry, don't worry. It's not going to, to go off. Humphrey isn't going to accidentally uh, worry if into a uh, reality <laughs> shake, huh? <laughs> you know, that's the funny thing. Humphrey might be the only thing that would survive it. As far as I can tell, he's invulnerable. Um, did you know that he is a fixed point of reference? I mean, a cat's ego is uh, <laughs> all the fixed point of reference reality needs. Huh? <laughs> I guess so. It has something to do with the experiment that they did on him, sending him back through time. Um, he is an interdimensional point of ref fixed point of reference. He's always he's always in the exact same spot, wherever he happens to be. Useful to know. It actually is. If you are ever lost, and you can see where he is. You can use them kind of like a pole star. I did that once. He doesn't know, do you? And I say, scratching him under the chin. Do you? Know, you don't know that. You don't. You're just a kitty. You have no idea that you transcend space time. No, you don't. I think we'll cut that scene there. Um, that's okay. Nice to know we've got a, essentially a nuke hanging around in the, uh, the break room. Um, I want to know then where did Cameron, before we get to more uh, critics from Operative McLaughlin, Cameron, what, where, where, where did you go? Where, you've got a frog with you now. Um, I have, and uh, the frog sitting on my head, and as is established earlier, um, whenever like the frog uh, is quacking or like making any noise, it reminds me of my old home. Uh, because last time I've been in the office, uh, I've been remembered that I was supposed to become king. Um, and this time, I remembered the the day when uh, I got summoned to this planet. Um, and then I remembered, oh shit, hope was there. But I still got access to all the files of hope. So I'm gonna gonna deep dive into the files again and do research. I want to know if Hope actually came up to summon uh, me uh, with the idea to summon me because they only could summon me if they would know my real name and how on earth should a human be able to even to know or even speak my true real name um, and yeah, I'm 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 gonna search all the files, uh, and and I'm still quite angry because I feel I feel I've been set up all along, and I've been hanging on this cursed planet, uh, saving dumbass humans that can't save themselves. I yeah, I'm sick of it. I'm I'm gonna I I, I need to find out what actually happened. Yeah, I think um. So yeah, you're in like the. The filing center of the division and i think uh there's like a clerk there um i think you probably met them a few times um um i'm gonna say their name is operative chance 
Um, they look like they should be frontlining a K-pop boy band, um, um, but instead it. So so the effect is like, what if a you know a a very handsome um, Korean uh, star is playing a nerd in a TV show? <laughs> that's that's the vibe that that they're giving off. Um, should have to find a picture of that now. Um, but 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 you can tell they are actually like a proper nerd. It's just they they look so beautiful. Um, and they kind of look up from what they're typing, and they just kind of like, even for uh, raise an eyebrow and says, "Cameron Sweet Tooth, I don't normally see you uh, in these parts." Oh, hold on, my headset just died. Uh, second, why reconnect that? I don't know why that did that happened there. All right, it's back. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I look about like 10 centimeters left to his uh, head. I can't look him in the eyes. Um, if a uh, crocodile could blush, uh, could blush, I would but I don't, uh, fortunately. Um, and I say, came from, um, we did use quite different letters. Um, we, we basically had something like runes and I'm still confused by the lettering you guys do. But uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, can't talk. I have to do research. It's important. It's for my mission. Um, right. Would you please let me into the um, uh, let let me through to the personal files uh, on division members? Um, I think they probably will, but I do want you to. No, you're not unleashing the dark here. I think like. Um... You're not gonna beat this person up. Um, I mean, I mean, you you want to enforce your will on someone physically, socially, or emotionally. That is the move. Um, well, um, only sort of because um, yeah. you're being you polite. gave me the files with the mission. I did. I did oh. take a note on that. Uh, McLaughlin oh, yes. trusted me with a secret mission and gave me the division's files. Oh on yes, it. yes, yes, yeah, yeah. I think like. Um, they will kind of like nod and they say, uh, Operator McLaughlin sent a note ahead about you. You can go in, but you have to leave the frog here. Yeah, uh, I uh, try to, like, I start to reply, but then, like, just shut up. Uh, <laughs> set a frog on the desk uh, and, uh, yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not worth it. It's it's totally unfair, but it's not worth it. It's not your frog. Like, what do you mean it's unfair? Also, you're not allowed to just bring. Reminds me of home. He's the you... only. He's my personal anchor in this time and space. <laughs> do you think Operative Chance gonna let you bring a frog near Division Files? I hoped, but <laughs> unleash the dark. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so you want to look at that file and any other kind of files? Um, yeah, like most specifically how I, I want information on how I actually ended up here. Because, okay. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Like they wouldn't, how would they know my name? Did, did, did I just try like several thousand different names and see who came through the portal? What if they're like a major demon came through? That it just doesn't add up. So, yeah. um, and hope was there. Like that, that, that much I know. I, I remember that, and and that's it's been established. So, um, that is something that that bothers me. Okay. Um, I think I I think I want you to roll grasping keys for this. I mean, you're not gonna get a key of the apocalypse, but like that's kind of like our yeah, investigation okay. move. Okay. I'm I'm going bold as well. Uh, I gave myself um, two tokens for being like angry all the time, um, if that's okay. And I would invest them. Like for punching the office building, 
uh, like the, the terrarium in the office. Mm -hmm. um, okay, there we go. Mark the top. A six plus the two is an eight. Wow, you're <laughs> just always on point. Yeah, I think yeah, you dig through like the files. Um, and it's almost like as if like, it, it's almost like what the information you're looking for, it's kind of like drawn to you. It's almost like, like, oh, I can follow these threads. I know exactly what I'm looking for. Um, and I think, yeah, you'll find it. I think who... I guess I want to ask Brandon if they want to have an input on what Hope was doing there when Cameron was summoned. Um, uh, so uh, the, well, the, the first thing is looking at my personnel files. Um, I have 12 of them. Um, it, there, is, there is hope. You know, and then the you know then and then that one's been amended to hope, uh, you know, v you know ver version one, hope version two, hope version three, etc. <laughs> and they were they they refer to each other to some degree. Um, see, you know, hope four says he see hope version three with following amendments. Um, <laughs> And it details some differences. Um, uh, but when you um, when you wade through them and put them together, um, in um, it does. Um, uh, Hope was uh, was there when you were summoned. Um, it's not clear what role she played. Um, okay, the, the files don't say where they knew, um, like who t told them my uh, actual real name? My, my inclination, if I'm allowed to state the answer, uh -huh. my inclination is that your real, your real name was found out by sorcery. Um, is that someone found an artifact um, that um, you know that linked uh, that they knew linked to a summoning, and they got um, and they got a you know they 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 got a true name out of it. I'm gonna um, add something to that. Um, I think you see buried at like the bottom on like notes of like ephemera is like uh, the agent was in charge of, you know, breaking up like that summoning that found you said so interviewed some of the people involved in summoning. And they'd said that they had been given this, or they, uh, they found this artifact um, and there's like unconfirmed reports that they were following the direction of a well, there's there's dispute on whether it was a crocodile person or an alligator person, um, but there's an implication that at least some of them thought that they've been given by. Yeah, and I and it may well be that division was um, that there were people who were trying to summon you in order to control you, um, and you know unleash you. Uh, and uh, you know to to dominate you and then use you um, as a weapon, and uh, division forestalled them, and then realized this information is out there, and that the only way that we can prevent this from taking place is to actually summon you um, in a controlled environment where you're not dominated, um, and that way that would uh, foil. Uh, the people who are trying to uh, to reach through, and maybe they didn't know exactly know you know who it, that it was you or exactly what they were getting, just that they were summoning a a powerful entity. So division was basically stealing their thunder, um, and hoping that they could you know they could defuse the situation, 
and they ask Tope uh, to open the portal. Um, to allow them to uh, to pull you through. That is a cool and unexpected answer. All right, I'll let you stew on that. Uh, we've heat. Uh, I think uh, we get a shot of Big Cameron reading all this, and in the background, of farm croaking. Uh, <laughs> um, I think I'll be here another hour. So let's come back again. Say thirty-five past the hour. And then we'll hit the, like these final two interviews and then maybe some parting shots of what the next mystery is going to be, which I did have to add, add something prepped up. Um, but you know, it is what it is. But let's come back at 35 past. Um, cool. Okay. So it's Katuna being taken to uh, going to Operative McLaughlin's office, which if I remember correctly is up in one of the towers. It, it has a terrarium full of frogs. Um, and... He's still patched. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think... Um, yeah, it's got it, a it's... piece of plastic taped, o- taped over it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, other than that, it doesn't, there's no sign that like someone had a, had a you know, punched a, <laughs> a fist through the glass. Um, and Opera McLaughlin, as is his want, is kind of like just staring forward. No. Uh, but I don't know what they say. Operative Una, please sit down. And I think, assuming that there is more. Or even if there's only one seat, uh, you know, Una regards it like it's a choice to be made. Um, so they they sit down. Uh, I don't know, far too comfortably uh, to seem elegant, but uh, somehow fitting fitting the mold. Oh, I should say as well, um, the choice was also with Cameron and Hope. I forgot to mention, but you can also roll first encounter with the with the division superior if you want to. Um, okay, let me see. Because um, first encounter is a it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's slightly a misnomer. It's when you first interact, yeah, it's necessarily okay. like the first time you meet them ever. Um, I guess I will. Um, so <laughs> I think I can take my first encounter is just having failed. Um. I wonder if um, if McLaughlin was a an agent with Hope who uh, recovered Una at the gates of Hell. Maybe maybe a much much younger Pete Possewade was on that mission. God, well, what does that look like? Not Google that. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, so, and how they loved or worshipped you before your fall. Um, I, I think uh, Una may have been Agent McLaughlin's kind of. Um, you know, uh, d- division style PhD subject. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, h- however much love and worship a, a, a PhD student can pour into their their subject. Subject, yeah. He did so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I will. That gets me three darkness tokens and I will spend two for first encounter. And the three uh, plus two is a five. Nice. Uh, So uh, (laughs) something something on you. (laughs) Oh, on a seven, on a, oh my God. On a seven minus 
They now serve those who force their fall. Their master will make a move against you immediately. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> God. Sorry for sorry for wrecking your nice calm end of the end of the <laughs> series. <laughs> oh, you have a special table. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. So the 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 standard first encounter seven minus is they have something on me. What terrible secret did they know about? Right, right. Me? But you have you have you have something worse. But I have so yeah. So the extra you love me once. Um, I I think. Um, I, I let me know if this this is all right, uh, Leandro. But I mm-hmm. think, you know, in the in the moment where, like, we get it like a rewind back to the moment before Una was shown into McLaughlin's office, and in his um, desk drawer, um, you know, we see him close it and like the shot of that desk drawer closing is two things. One is the um, the, the key of the apocalypse. Remember uh, that we found that was like a wing with the, the glyph, mm. the kind of old pure glyph uh, of Una's on it. And the second one is um, a book open on a page where the glyph that was superimposed upon it, the demonic mark, is is described. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think... Yeah, so yeah, we get that shot. And... <laughs> uh, I'm going to let this play out before I tell you uh, what move um, <laughs> the sure. roster makes. Because I wasn't expecting this. I'll give you a moment to think about it. <laughs> um but yeah. Well, the the move the you know the 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 move might be you know clandestine. Yeah, it's just that I, I will inform the player, so they'll know. Um, but yeah, they ask if like yeah, <laughs> take ask her to take a seat. Um, and I think like uh, they say. How was Wizard World? I mean, unexpected. I would have. I would have presumed that you would keep a better eye on your agents in the field. Um, you know, um, Agent uh, Murphy was put through quite a lot, and I'm not sure. If, uh, if that shouldn't be your your biggest lessons learned taken from this whole uh, episode. Well, it's not an excuse, but it's explanation. We're quite stretched thin as we are in the division. And Agent Murphy was young and new. This assignment was meant to be a test. Well, we've learned quite a number of things. One, Alexander Payton isn't as cowed as I was, as I believed he was. Two, Agent Murphy could do with some more seasoning back here in HQ. And three, the gaze of heaven Still, still seems to seek you. And I think that that observation by McLaughlin may take Una back, given that I don't think that would have been in any immediate report from anyone else except except them. Hmm. Well, this um, Mr. Payton obviously um, had grand plans. Hmm. He always does. He's incapable of thinking small. I... I think like uh, there's like a uh, in his a very inexpressive face, and you get a flicker of like 
not like longing, but um, like, like almost like, um, okay, kind of longing. Um, you know the feeling when you miss someone. It's like just a weird flicker on their face. But at any rate, his grand scheme has been thwarted this time, thanks to you and your colleagues. I'm sure. I'm sure this world here and the world above owes you owes you a service. But what do you imagine would have happened had he been able to force the gates of heaven? We have our hypotheses, but heaven on earth is a concept that is just about as destructive as hell on earth. Uh, quick question. Uh, remind me, how did your fall kind of like came to be? So, um, I mean, from from the from the initial story, right? My origin is, I was an angelic creature destroyed by my jealous god. Uh, so, you know, cast out of heaven by some kind of idea that they were a bit too perfect and maybe attracting with too much worship by people who should have been worshiping their god instead. God. Um, sorry, my internet broke up there. Uh, what was the last sentence? Oh, uh, attracting a lot more attention and worship than they should have. And uh, all of that worship should have been directed to the, their God instead. Lovely. Um, uh, uh, I think... I think like um, when McGawkin speaks again, their tone is like wistful. Um, actually, no, they spoke last. Um, tell me, how do you kind of get the sense that like there's like a weird kind of like, strange power in the room um, as if like time is suddenly like, it, it, it's, it's kind of like the same feeling you felt of being uh, near that time anchor. Suddenly it feels like this room is like isolated from the rest of the world. So I think I am aware that the, the kind of harmonic arcs of my wings are being kind of hemmed in a little bit. You know, that something, some force um, is pushing back on them, not in a kind of aggressive way, like maybe the other power is even trying to hold itself back so it's not noticed but mm -hmm. there's something not quite right not quite ringing true with my uh my wings mm -hmm. um i think just uh yeah i think um the move that kind of like their master is doing is that kind of those harmonics are kind of like they're feeling in their wings, but I think like, unless you're like really concentrated, you'll feel that they're almost like seeding themselves into your wings. Like um, those energies are like filtering in. You know, it's kind of like how when Shard saw all those ley lines and there's some stuff connected to it. It's like their power is like intertwining with yours. Um, also, I'll ask you to mark a condition. How are you feeling? <laughs> this is kind of like happening amidst this interview. Um, you know, I, um, I'm inclined to say raging, <laughs> but I, there's only so many terrariums that McLaughlin has that we can break, right? <laughs> <laughs> You never know. Maybe just as a common occurrence in his office is like, yeah, uh, yeah. like he put the terrarium there so people have a, something else to focus the rage on. 
I think maybe I will instead go with obsessed. Um, because I can definitely feel it, but I do not know the source um, of the power. And you know, I, I am just curious about, you know, given what I know in my history with McLaughlin, you know, what that means and Maybe I'm, I would say suspicious of him, but I'm, you know, uh, I guess I'm suspicious of what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. I think like then, I think there's like a kind of like a snap as if, and suddenly when you, it feels like you're suddenly coming to, suddenly it feels like, oh, there's a jolt and McLaughlin is in the middle of a sentence and suddenly that feeling that you're disconnected isn't here anymore. And he's just saying, at any rate, it could have gone worse, but you and your colleagues performed quite exemplary. Um, I'm glad that Alexander Payton can stew for another decade or so. Don't worry, we place more agents in the park. Um, but for now, that's all I need from you. Thank you for your service. He's talking as if like you just had a long conversation. Yeah. Uh, okay, do. so yeah, I, I guess I will kind of nod curtly to him and uh, you know stalk out of the room. Uh, uh, back don't wanna... bad coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I want to see what else. I think. Um, yeah, I think we should we should do the hope um, interview then, <laughs> and then like any, and then I kind of want to see because Cameron has been talking a lot about Yuna. I do want to see the two of them. Um, <laughs> at least deal with that. Um, but yeah, uh, hope uh, another gopher. Yes. Um, summons you to McLaughlin's office. So, I I have uh, I took an advance in the meantime, and I took a division move, and I chose mm. the most ironic one. Ooh. because for me it's much less about the advantage i get and much more about what it does for the character oh my God. um and so um the move that i the division move that i took um is honorary human status mm -hmm. <laughs> Unlike most monsters, they've been accepted by society as a whole and at least somewhat famous. So when you take the move, answer at least one of the following questions. Um, which questions do you want to answer? Um, what, is the, uh, what does the world know about me? So my fame is, um, is on the internet. Um, mm. Hope is an influencer. Um, and what they, uh, what they know uh, about her is that she can tell the future, or at least that's what they say. Um, that's also how she went over uh, the, 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 her, her, her following. Is she made a prediction about something. Uh, she said, stay away, you know, from, you know, this place because something bad's going to happen there on Tuesday, August the 26th. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, there was, and it was like, a, um, you know, a, a, you know, six car pile up or something, you know, some, you know, the truck over truck, a chemical truck overturned, you know, the, 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 you know, you know, burned a couple of buildings down kind of thing. It was uh, 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 something catastrophic, but not a terrorist attack or anything like that. Um, and of course, what I have to hide from my the public at all costs is that I'm not human, because they think I am. They don't think I'm a monster that is is being treated as human. They think I'm a person. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, this doesn't necessarily sit all that well with hope. It's just the thing that happens. You know, someone someone posted a video of her saying something uh, at some point and then it's like and this came true and then you know bam she's got this following 
And maybe somebody at the division said, you know, we could reuse this, this is possibly useful. We want you to respond. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, idea. yes. So yeah, so I'm gonna come into McLaughlin. I'm gonna take my phone out. I'm gonna bang it on the table and I'm gonna say, was this your idea? I think like um, they give you like a look, they're not blinking and they say, there was a committee meeting and it was floated that this would be a good way to use your abilities and presence in the world. Yeah, bullshit. You, because I look like, you know, I look like, because I look like a 19 year old girl. That was part of the discussion we had in committee. God damn it. How was Wizard World? It was a complete clusterfuck, as you well know. It was a dimensional snarl. I'm astonished it's not a, just a smoking black hole with everything that was going on in there. Now we managed to break all those strands before the whole thing came apart at the seams. There's nothing short of, well, I mean, hesitate to use the word miracle, but it was lucky. Well, unfortunately that is what the division demands of you and your colleagues. They demand miracles. Over on and, and over again. That is the job. Are you becoming tired of it? Because if you are, the, you only need to say so. I'm sure we can find other you ways. Know, you know, I... You know, I can't stop. Hmm. So I'm going to throw two tokens into first encounter because this can only end badly. <laughs> so I'm going to roll it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a 13, which I pretty much expected. Uh-huh. You are deeply afraid of them. Yes. The keeper of the doors will tell you how they will bring you closer to your doom. If you got an idea. Oh, um, absolutely. No, he's go gonna, ahead. Yeah, no. He's going to try to kill me at some point. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, it's done, just when, it's just a question of when. It's just a question of when they're going to try. They're going to decide I am too dangerous, and they're going to eliminate. They're going to try to ambush me and eliminate me. Yeah, I mean this is why he was so unconcerned when Cameron was throwing his his tantrum. Uh, <laughs> everyone's throwing a tantrum apparently uh, <laughs> in the office. Um, no, they you know when I said and when I said I was you know that you know humanity was the enemy. Um, yeah, he's the personification. Um, they've they've used me over and over again, and at some point they're going to decide that I am too dangerous to keep around, and they're going to try and uh, and they're going to try to undo me. Probably the only thing that's holding that up is they haven't figured out how to do it permanently. Because mm -hmm. yeah. it's it's you know they're they're not one hundred percent sure that if they kill any one of me that it won't that other ones won't keep coming back. They'll get there, probably. <laughs> I think like uh, they just kind of give you like this 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 stare because you know. They, they had just said, you know, you can walk away if you want, and you're like, no. Nah. Well, at least McLaughlin will do it. I'm not sure the whole division feels. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah. McLaughlin will. Like we, we just but, figured out in the previous. But McLaughlin's, McLaughlin's, McLaughlin's feeling is is that right? Is I'm a weapon to be used until such time as oh, yeah. they have to destroy me. Yeah, he did just call you a gun to Cameron's face. Yep, um, a gun and a bomb. So. Did you just want to ask questions you already knew the answers to, or did you have something else? Mm -hmm. 
No, I simply want to see how you're doing. Since when? I think like uh, there's like a pause as in like, as if, you know, he's consulting with the whatever is connected to his back. You're not wrong that there has been an unfortunate amount of dimensional flux in the world. The business in Dublin with the breachings of different afterlives, this multiple snarls in wizard world. There has been an uptick in activity and of anyone here in the division, you are best suited in the traversal of time and space. Yeah. You need me to disentangle it. As usual. Like I said, if you feel you are not up to it, you merely, you merely need to say so and humanity will endure as best they can. If you want, you can go to the orphanage, you can work at the holy arsenal. Division is manifold. I'm sure we can find a position that you would prefer to be situated in. That's, um, I don't believe you. Um, can I ask you to listen to the dark while you're, while yes. you're here? Sure. Listen to the dark. That's a situation. Um, no, it's a basic move. Oh, it's a basic move. Right. All right. I'll spend two. Five, six, seven. Do you want to spend a bond to <laughs> pump that to an eight, or do you want to let that stand? Yeah, I, re I recharged my bond with Humphrey. Um, Oh, yes. And um, uh, I, I put a hand on the table and for a moment it vibrates. And then um, Um, and the, the motion wakes up Humphrey who goes, who, meow, <laughs> um, and jump off the table and the moment passes. Um, the insight that I gain is that I need these people as much as they need me. Is I work for the division because this is because the working through the division is the only path, only paths that offer anything except the remotest probability of 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 um, saving my people, and I have to I have to keep working in the field because as soon as I'm not working in the field anymore, they're likely to try and terminate. They're not going to tolerate me in a nun. And they need me, they need me to recruit, among other things. I've found more operatives for them, probably mm -hmm. than, than anybody else. I think like um when the moment passes, you see like the briefest flicker of a smile from McLaughlin towards Humphrey. Because Humphrey's a delight. Rest up, Hope. You rarely get a chance to. I, 
in between I the work? Never, <laughs> I never get a chance to rest, hmm. uh, as you know. If I ever, um, if I ever stop, then it's over. Uh, if I ever succeed, then you'll never see me again. I but in the meantime, I have to get up every day and keep trying. I've uh, I've pulled the division out of the ashes more times than you know. Because they didn't all take place in this continuum. Um, and I've uh, blown up the division a few times too. As you probably can guess. Big poker face. They're not reacting to <laughs> what you're saying. But not on purpose. That's good to know. I need, I, we coexist because you need me and because I need you. And you do well to remember that the next time you're thinking about trying to kill me. Duly noted. When next you see Operative Sweet Tooth, tell him to return my frog, would you? Oh. He took a frog? He took a frog. Oh, how strange. He likes the frogs. That's probably why. If he wanted his own frog, he, may, he, need, he needs to go through requisitions and assets and go through the proper channels. He can't just take my frog. I hope you understand the gravity of the situation. No, I, I really don't. Um, but I'll mention it to him. Good. All right. I think that's like that good as yeah, like so, just good yeah. dismissal. Yeah. All right. So yeah, if you excuse me, I've got about a hundred posts uh, to answer. And I start rolling my arms. It's gonna like stiff nod. Hope has yet not learned the lesson not to read the comments. On, on, on. <laughs> you don't need to reply to all of them. You don't need I'm to read them. I'm not replying to all of them. I have, I have, I have fifty thousand followers. <laughs> I just, you know, they they expect they expect some some vague pronouncements. That's fair. Okay. Most of what most of what I tell them is, you know is, uh, you know, typical horoscope bullshit. I see it in there, enough real, enough real uh, prognostication to um, keep them going. Just little bits and pieces. Um, okay. Now we still have some time. Does Cameron or you know want to do something? So we haven't seen Cameron in a while. Yeah, I'm already uh, somewhat close to epilogues or something like that because I have an idea for that. But uh, if anybody wants to uh, have a scene or something uh, without Cameron, I don't know if, if Una and Hope want to meet up now that uh, some things are more or less uh, clear than before. Oh, so Cameron's just not is is is, is squirreled away doing something. He is, yeah. Okay. He, okay. He made up his mind about something and uh, working on that. Okay. Uh, you know, is there anything else you want to do? Um, I don't think so. Um, yeah, nothing jumping out at me. Okay. Well, like I said, we we're doing a short session, so we can do like closing shots of each character, like kind of like analog, setting up, you know, what else? Uh, you know, kind of like. Just like teases of what might be happening in the future. Um, so why don't we start with Cameron since, since you've got an idea there, Mario. Okay. Um, yeah, um, I've been, um, we just saw Cameron uh, doing the research. Um, 
checking hopes files um and after he found out everything was totally different uh, than uh, he expected it to be um he looks quite quite troubled um and uncertain and after a couple more seconds or a minute nobody can can really tell um all the expressions vanish uh, from his face. He goes through through the files again, and we see the file of uh, Anther. Um, and he takes it like he's he's wearing that trench coat, so uh, I assume uh, I can can hide it quite well. Takes the frog um, and walks out uh, into his little um, room. Um, where he writes two notes on the first piece of paper uh, he finds. Uh, one, uh, one note says, um, uh, just a moment, I wrote it down. Uh, I'm sorry, um, I didn't know who to trust. And the other one, uh, no, he actually writes three notes. One, <laughs> one, the other one says, um, uh, I'll miss you. And I'm looking forward to see one of your faces again. And one note says, it simply says, I quit. Um, and the one I quit um, still is still laying on a table when he leaves the room. Uh, he doesn't really take anything with him. The, the note uh, that says, um, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't know who to trust, um, uh, it, uh, will, will be slipped uh, under the door of uh, hope. And the one with I'll, I'll miss you and I'm looking forward to see one of your faces again will be slipped uh, uh, through the door of uh, uh, Shard. Um, and with that, we see a tall crocodile in trench coat leaving the headquarter um, and still quite angry, kicking, kicking a few things over, um, but not looking back. quite a shot um what about for hope or for una uh, i'll go like so um i think we yeah we see una in their bunk at some point in time not necessarily that day but yeah, maybe in the future, uh, in the same position that they were in when they were first, you know, uh, activated for for the last mission. Uh, but they're like pointing a finger at the. I imagine it's like really industrial, really um, haphazardly put together in a hurry, and they're pointing uh, a finger at like these pipes that are running along the the ceiling corners. Mm -hmm. and like pushing energy into them uh, trying to activate some kind of harmonic resonance in them trying to explore the rest of the compound and, and just try to kind of achieve that or explore that feeling of being hemmed in uh, while in McLaughlin's presence earlier mm -hmm. but just just waiting for the next time uh, they get it to play. It's hoping. Um, what about hope? Hope is um, um, sitting in front of, um, of of a laptop computer, and she's. She's um, answering some things on um, on uh, on on Facebook and finishing up a little TikTok video which she posts, and then she sighs and she calls up an app, um, and the the app. Uh, 
acts like a multifaceted mirror. It actually it shows many pictures of hope on the screen. Um, all kind of looking back at her. And she looks around at them and she talks to the screen and says, I um, I haven't forgotten you. And I never will forget why I'm doing this. And I, I love you all so much and I miss you so much. And I hope one day we can see each other again. And however many worlds I have to go through and however many times I have to go through them, I will keep trying until I can't anymore or I succeed in finding you again. Um, I know you can't really hear me, but it feels like you can sometimes. Um, and she takes out the circlet and the little floating star. And she says, so here for this time, take these things and maybe they'll help. And she collapses her hands around them and they, and they, and as she closes her palms, they wink out of existence. And, and then she turns off the app and closes the laptop. I think I've got two shots to end the, the, this, this run. Um, one shot is of McLaughlin still sitting in his office. We kind of like pan around. And when we kind of go over his shoulder, you kind of see what he sees um, because of this machine. And he sees like, like the world around is like made of it's a very matrixy kind of view um it's like the world is built up of like you know codes and algorithms and whatnot and he's looking at like a diagram a schematic um and it's it's like it's like it's called from like other different files that cameras watching it's a it's a in progress blueprint on how to create a human being how to create a replicant, so to speak. And the second shot is in this town in somewhere in England, this lovely pokey town named Telford. Um, Mary Fitzroy is taking a walk. Um, and she's walking over like this bridge. It's nice and sunny, but it's cold. So she's kind of like has this coat and she's kind of like thinking She's wondering whether what happened was the world really happened. And she kind of like shivers when she remembers her crocodile friend. Um, as she crosses the bridge, the river underneath, something long and large slithers under the surface. And uh, we'll close Apocalypse Keys till then. <laughs> um, thank you all so much. That was a lot of feelings and some great character work. I'm gonna cross a uh, stop this recording, but again, thank you all so much. Um, anyone who's interested, want to check out the God of the Hawkinskis links down below. Um, thanks for everyone who's watching or been listening. Bye bye to them. <laughs>